<laughs> okay, it's March out, and the uh, fish in Little Bay Danak up here are actually starting to get ready for their spawn. They're moving up into Little Bay Danak, and we're going to try and catch some of them. Now, like many clear lakes, Little Bay Danak is known for a sunrise and sunset feeding windows. So it's a little bit short times. So Corey Sprangle, Chase Parsons, and I are going to go out and fish some structure and try and catch some of these walleyes. Now, what would be cool is if we can catch them on shiver minnows. The shiver minnows were actually born right here in Little Bay Danak and tested right here. So we're going to use some shivers on structure. We're going to go out and do some ice trolling, and we're going to show you the next bite. <laughs> And I tell you what, the monsters are in here. You know, this is a popular fishing area with all these lakes around here. <laughs> it's so awesome! North of the pristine waters of Wisconsin's Green Bay, yet still off the Great Lake Michigan, lies the upper peninsula of Michigan's Little Bay Dinoc. But don't let its name fool you. Coming in just under the size of another staple walleye destination, Lake Winnebago, there is plenty of water, especially when ice fishing, to explore. So we're fishing March in Little Bay Danak, and obviously the reason that we're up here is a lot of the fish from Lake Michigan and Green Bay come up into Little Bay Danak to spawn. There's a lot of incoming streams all the way from the Whitefish to the Days River, the Escanaba River, and several other ones up here. So the fish are coming up and they're staging, getting ready for the spring spawn. Now we're fishing three unique patterns as we're up here in Little Bay Danak. The first one is real sharp structure, and this structure can drop anywhere from 10 10 feet all the way down to 30 feet. It can drop 30 feet all the way down to 60 feet. And there's a lot of this structure here in Little Bay Danak, all the way from the Ford River, all the way up to the top of the uh, Little Bay Danak. Uh, when we're fishing that, we're mainly looking at fishing at 30 foot depth, whether that's the bottom of the break, or in some places, it's actually the top of the break. Uh, the other place that we're fishing on structure is the structure adjacent to mud flats. Now, this structure adjacent to mud flats is a much more gradual taper, and it's going to go anywhere from 12 foot all the way out to maybe 20 foot deep. Uh, these mud flats are very, very important because that's the third pattern we're going to fish. As the morning comes on, the fish come off of the structure, whether it's the sharp breaks or that more gradual structure. They come out and they kind of suspend and rove around out here in the mud flats. And that's when we put out the tip up, spread out a little, but at the same time, we also like to be jigging. So we're on the structure next to those mud flats. So three unique patterns. The fish are getting ready to spawn. They're concentrating up here in Little Bay to knock, and that's why we're here in March. Oh, there he is. <laughs> that was crazy. He came up after me like twice. It doesn't feel like a really big one. It's okay. Actually, he bit it on the drop there. I went down after him. He's not the best, but I think he's going to be the right kind. Oh, yeah. Decent fish. <laughs> not exactly the caliber we're going for, but fun. Oh, the shiver there. I'm hooked right in the beak. He wasn't going to get off. <laughs> That one was just a weird one because it came up really hot twice and it didn't hit it and I couldn't believe it and then it actually started going away and I just dropped slowly at him and he came back up a third time and just cracked it. So now we're gonna get this one back because we can do a little bit better than this. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Oh, there we go. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, accuracy matters. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors.
While scouting the ice fields of Little Bay Dinoc in the UP of Michigan, Keith, Chase, and Corey are allowed three lines per angler and are opting to use one of those for shivering to gauge the mood of the walleyes. But they aren't just arbitrarily hanging minnows from the tip-ups either. Fishing these expansive mud flats up here in Bay Dinoc are a little more scientific than one might think. Now, first off, when I set up jigging, I want to be closer to those high percentage areas, those steep breaks, pieces of structure. That's where I want to set up for jigging because more likely than not, that's where you're to see a lot more fish. But as for these tip-ups, these are the tools we're going to use to cover a lot of water. But one of the main things that I'm going to do with these tip-ups that it's often overlooked is I'm actually going to try finding where these fish are coming through the water column. I'm staggering them anywhere from two feet off the bottom, upwards of eight to ten feet off the bottom. So we're allowing with these tip-ups to cover more water and also figure out where these fish are riding in the water column and really start to put the herd on these big walleyes up here in Escanaba. What's that, Keith? Flag? Oh, yeah. Nice slow spin. Oh, look at this little. There's probably not nice, much line left here. Nice slow spin. Got it. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going there. You ready? Yep. You got him? Yeah. What do you think? Here I know what it is. You know what it is? It's sliding in. It's pounding. It sure went along. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be getting close. Now it's gotten mad is what's happened. Here he comes. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's a good one. That's a nice, healthy fish That there, is Keith. a good fish. Yeah, look at, <laughs> look at how he's a... He's banged up a little bit. Banged up, but I'll take him. Well, I said it's kind of like in the summer when you catch a shiver minnow at the end of the cast, yep. the fish on it. It's like, God, this feels like, like an 18 inch, 18. And then it gets closer and closer. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing on this one. Well, let's see if we can get him unhooked here. I think it's going to oh, come yeah. out right. You barely had him, Keith. Ooh, that's how we want them, though. <laughs> that's fun. And it's kind of like trolling, isn't it? Yeah. Set them suspended, spread them out, and this is what you can get. Gnarly bugger back in here. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. You gonna wave goodbye? Yep. <laughs> so we're using the precision trolling app. The Real Deal brought to you by Precision Trolling Data, giving anglers the real deal on crankbait diving depth information. The mark of a good boat company is one that listens to their consumer base. And for those of you that are familiar with the Nitro Deep V line of boats, you're probably recognizing this hull a little bit, but it's got a different name on it now. This is actually the 2019 ZV19, but they've done something that's pretty important for northern bodies of water. They've actually taken this hull, it's big, it's heavy, and they've maximized the horsepower all the way up to a 225 now. And a lot of people think that that's all about speed and it's definitely not. It's about running in rough water, being able to power to the next wave and an extra 25 horsepower is really going to help you out with this hull. The thing that's really important that they've done with the ZV19 series is they now have two different layouts. They have the ZV19 which is the fishing layout but also they have a brand new platform for 19 and that's ZV19 Sport. So if you're a family that likes to go skiing, you like to go tubing, that might be your platform. They actually you replace these drop-in bins with flip-up seats in the back. There's pads in the front for the family. Everything that's going to be a little bit better to do a combination of fishing and skiing. So if you're in the market for a 19-foot fiberglass boat that can handle almost any water you want to throw at it, but also able to go out with the family and have a lot of fun, be sure to check out the two packages in the Nitro ZV19 and ZV19 Sport. Ice trolling is dialing in some key depths for Keith, Corey, and Chase to keep an eye on. He was right tight to the bottom, and I just started slowly shaking it and dropping it right to him. However, the other half of this bite is in matching up the correct jigging cadence for the mood of the walleyes. So they've been coming up and then kind of curling down, and when they start to curl down, I just dropped with it, shook a little, and boom, and hit. Which, with patience, can have big results. That's a good one. Just rifled it. Oh, big head shakes. Oh, yeah, big wallet. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, little TIG. 
Look at that. It's actually... I think I barely had hooks in it, and it's actually hooked through the tag. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, man, look at that fish. <laughs> it's a good one. It's not crazy long, but it weighs a lot. It was crazy, too, because it just came in right on bottom, and I was jigging that shiver minnow probably five feet off the bottom, and just like lightning came up and just rifled it. Bunch of big head shakes. Quite frankly, I, I wasn't sure if it was a pike or not, but... Whew, Good fish. <laughs> so it's been really important for us to pay attention to the cadence and what's getting these fish to commit. We got here right at the beginning of a front. High winds, snow, and it's definitely turned these fish off. And typically when you're working a shiver minnow, when you're not marking fish, you're working it aggressively. But we're doing it about three feet off the bottom. We're not letting this bait touch bottom at all until those marks come in. When the marks come in and they start coming up at the lure, typically you're gonna wanna raise it and you're still working that action, but we found that it's actually scaring the fish. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of weird. So what we're doing with these shiver minnows is basically when that fish comes up and you can see it on the graph come right to the shiver minnow, we're just simply staying real steady and lifting really, really slowly. And a lot of times when you do that two, three feet up, that fish will finally hit it at the top. But then of course, because they're turned off a little bit, some of the times they won't even hit that. So the other way we're getting these fish to bite is basically when that fish goes back down to the bottom after you've lifted it a little bit you're gonna meet it in the middle on the drop with a really slow drop and really really subtle shakes of the rod right there so a little bit different way that you might be fishing these things but if the bite gets tough change up your cadences to try to get some of these fish to commit better cool. Jay the far one yeah the far one out there Making me run spring. Let's go. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's going. We got a spinner. Oh, yeah. Spinning, Jay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let you mess this one up. <laughs> Mainly because I want to keep my gloves on. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Getting down there on a little bit of line. You ready, Chase? I'm ready. What do you think, Corey? I don't know. It isn't the biggest, but it's. Now she's getting out of here. It feels like a walleye head shake. Now it realizes it's coming up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Not that long, but <laughs> healthy fit. That's there. a healthy one. Hey, you did a pretty good job too. Look at that. Treble hook right. Yeah. Pop that out. Boy, he right took it. The... He took it a long ways too. I mean, he was just ripping it when we got I up know, here. We pulled up on that thing. Was spinning pretty good. I wasn't sure if there's gonna be any line left. The tip up setup we're using today is relatively simple. But two key components that I think are really important is having a hole cover. You know, this is gonna keep out blowing snow, keep your hole from freezing, and, and also unnatural sunlight. Another one is just having some sort of marking system uh, so that we can find these tip ups in this blowing snow. When you're getting back to the tip up here, just a classic wood frame tip up. But one thing I like to have for a main line is a Dacron line, but I wanna have a lot of line on here. I'm using a 20, 25 pound Dacron so I can get a lot of line on. These are Great Lakes fish that they make a very long runs a lot of times. For a marking system, it just makes it a lot easier for resetting. I'm just using a small button. But getting down to the business side of things, I have my main line attached to a small swivel, and on the other end of that swivel, I have a fluorocarbon leader. I'm using a 15 pound test here. I like to have a long leader. This is a six to eight foot leader. We're generally dealing with a lot of clean water here in the Great Lakes. At the end of that, I have a number six treble hook. Obviously, we're dealing with a big bait. I want a good size hook on the end of that. But one of the important things of this whole system is having a good size sucker. But one thing about having a, a big bait down there, it's obviously hard to keep control of them. So a lot of times I'll clip off the back of that tail, kind of put a little restrictor plate on them, and obviously we're after big fish. These Great Lakes fish are used to eating big baits. If they can eat one meal a day and use a lot less energy to get that one meal down, that's what they're gonna try doing. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats, fish the finest. 
Bass Pro Shops, and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. When you go to the boat launch and it's time to launch your boat or to actually take it out when you're loading the boat on the trailer, there's a, a potential for a prop damage. A lot of boat launches have little blowout holes and there's rocks and gravel by quite a few of the launches. And especially with a bigger boat like this, they're heavy enough that it's hard to crank them on the trailer. So you almost always have to use some assist from your outboard. That's why I like to run the Atlas HD jack plate. It's a hydraulic plate. And the way that I load my boat, when I'm going to drive it on the trailer, I raise that engine all the way up so that it, it lifts the skag away from those rocks. It lifts my prop away from those rocks and gravel. And uh, I can actually drive it right on with no damage. You know, when you're paying five, six, seven hundred dollars for a good high performance prop, the last thing that you want to do is damage it at the boat ramp. Then when I get back on the trailer, I lower it back down so that it really takes the pressure off the transom, put it on the transom saver, and away we go. So there's a lot of reasons for using hydraulic jack plates, performance-wise, rough water, calm water, speed, all that kind of stuff. But one of the biggest attributes that I can see is it saves you a lot of money and you don't ding up those props at the boat launch. With the weather affecting the overall mood of these little Bay to Knock mudflats walleyes, the tip-ups have not only been instrumental in tracking movements and depths of fish to supplement shivering from inside their shacks, but has been preferred in terms of presentation. There we go. Good fish. You got him? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good fish. <laughs> However, with all this gear between Chase, Corey, and Keith, there is a lot to keep track of. One of the things that really makes uh, ice fishing fun for me is, is that I can carry everything with me to make my day enjoyable, comfortable, and put me on a lot of fish. And one of the key pieces of equipment that I use for that is my sled here. So I wanted to go through my sled and just show you some of the stuff that I have rigged on it to make me more efficient out on the ice. I'll start right up in front here with my two augers. I carry the spare because, you know, if I would ever run low on juice or maybe have too deep of ice or something, I would figure the, the propane drill would be the one I'd use. What's interesting is after two years, I've never taken this off my sled. My ion just does all the work. It, it goes through anything, any ice conditions. I like to have a good GPS unit, obviously with a good chip in it so I can look at contours. I do just run this in straight graph mode. This isn't hooked up to any kind of a transducer or anything. Right down here, I've got some kind of nice, a lot of people don't run. These are called scratchers. Now a scratcher is simply, when I get out on bare ice, it'll actually scratch the ice and kick up enough pieces of ice, little chunks of ice, that'll keep my sled cool. My nebulous is really important. I've talked about that before. The beauty of this is if you would happen to run into a crack or something, find yourself in the water, simply pull this yellow handle hard and this thing blows up into a big raft. It can not only hold me, but it'll actually hold my sled suspended under the water so it's a lot easier to recover. The last thing is, is I like to run this big bucket in back here because I carry a lot of stuff. I like to carry my minnows back here. My, if I need some spare ion batteries, my hot boxes, things like that. I just got a lot of room back here to carry stuff. It's almost like a trunk. And then, of course, I hitch up my X200 and I can go anywhere. So this setup not only carries all my equipment, but keeps me comfortable and keeps me out on the ice catching fish. This one's all you, Chase. I don't know. It's not really doing too much, is it? You never know. Sometimes it seems like yeah. you take on it. Oh, there ain't much gone, though. This isn't your big sucker, is it? I'm just happy you parked that thing there so it's not so windy. Oh, there's a good one there, I think. <laughs> it didn't take up much line at all, no. did it? Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a good one. Turn it up, Jesus. A little bit. There we go. Oh, yeah! Look at that. Look at how healthy that thing is. 
Oh. <laughs> wow. Man, I mean, it didn't take out much line. I was thinking sucker. Yeah, I was too. I mean, we came up, nothing was happening. <laughs> Obviously, something happened yeah. there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, There's the travel. Bad. It's not yeah. too bad. We need the pliers, but yeah, it's, right yeah, there, it's not too bad. If we can just get hold of it. <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, man. That is a stud right there. <laughs> I mean, it's nice having those tip-ups out when we're jigging because you just never know. When they're, when they're finicky, sometimes it's, it's tough to beat a, a big sucker. We were pretty negative when we came up to it, looking at it, too, but I don't think that's any reason to be negative right there. Look at that. Oh, just a big girl go. <laughs> there we go. Nice! Get that glove! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Fishing these expansive mud flaps. <laughs> mud flaps. <laughs> Fishing these expansive mud flats <laughs> that we have here, um, you know, getting down to the uh, ready, pretty good diameter. Uh, uh, ready, six to eight foot uh, on the business side. Uh, ready? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not what we're after. Flag is good. Pike not so good. <laughs> Come on! He was moving so nice too. You know, like many Clearwater Lakes, Little Bay to Knock up here is known for, you know, early morning and late evening bites. <sighs> That's all I got. <laughs> the next bite.tv features seasonal articles, videos, and even full episodes. For everything related to the next bite, check us out online or on Facebook at the Next Bite TV.